Thank you all for coming. My name is Dr. Alex Schwartzman. I'm a holistic dentist in Smithtown, uh, Long Island, right down the road. Um, so today we're gonna, we have some mommies here, and we're going to talk about um, some, some questions that you all asked me earlier about holistic dentistry and children's dentistry and how to make it healthier and safer for your children. So um, the first, I'm going to tell you, let's start at the beginning. Let's start about development, because this is a really, really important topic. So have you kind of noticed that all your friends with, with children, they all get braces? Yeah, yeah. So why is it that all other animals on earth with teeth have straight teeth? And why do humans and our pets have crooked teeth, right? And what's interesting is if you look at our ancestors from about 10,000 years ago and before, and you dig them up out of the ground, look at their skulls, and you go back, a long time before that, all human beings were born with straight teeth. So crowded teeth is a modern phenomenon. It's not natural. It does not exist in nature. And the reason for that is, is actually very interesting. It has to do with the way we feed our children in infancy and throughout their development. So in this country and pretty much throughout the world, children are fed, are not really breastfed, or they're breastfed for a short period of time. And there was a time a few decades ago where women were discouraged from breastfeeding by our government because they were so brilliant. And so they said, let's take something natural that's been practiced for our entire existence as a species and that all mammals do. And we're just gonna take that and say, that's not a good idea. Let's make, take a man-made bottle, and when I say man-made, I really mean by a male, and we're gonna feed that to our children because that's so much better than nature, all right? And we all can agree that that's pr probably a silly idea now that we look back and think about it, but that's what was practiced and still practiced today by pretty much everybody. If you look at nature, and m my dentistry and my philosophy of dental care for my patient, it really is based on nature. So whenever I'm not sure about something, I step back and I say, what happened in nature? How does nature do it? And then that usually gives me the right path. So in nature, when you look at uh, groups of people that still live naturally, and there's a, there's a lot of them, there's different pockets of humans who live primitively or naturally, no matter where they are on Earth, whether they're in their Eskimos or their Aborigines, they all breastfeed to about four and a half years of age. Not exclusively they wean, but children are breastfed to about four and a half years old. Now no one in America does that, or it's extremely rare. And if you tell someone, I, I'm gonna breastfeed my children until four years old, you are look like you're nuts. But the truth is, um, right, but not, you know, you know somebody it's like one person out of all the people you know, right? So what happens is when you breastfeed, the correct muscles are activated in the child's mouth and the tongue, and the muscles develop properly. And so what crooked teeth are a result of is a muscular imbalance. When you're, the muscles on the outside of your face form a sheet, and your tongue inside your face is another muscle, and what happens is the, the tongue and the, the outer muscles create a zone of neutrality where your teeth come, come into. So if your muscles, let's say, are too strong on the side because you're, you're feeding a child from a baby bottle, the teeth will actually get crushed in. And the other issue that happens is it creates an incorrect swallowing pattern. So what happens is the tongue doesn't move the right way and the tongue a lot of times pushes the teeth out. So you have a combination of incorrect swallowing and muscular imbalance, which causes the teeth to get crushed and squished and crooked, basically. And it actually, what that muscular imbalance does, it actually deforms your upper jaw. Because in a war between muscles and bones, the muscles always win. So you might have heard that if you exercise, your bones get stronger, right? Because the muscles act on the bone to strengthen it. And the tongue, the, the tongue and the outer muscles of your face 
actually shape your upper jawbone. What's interesting is that the upper jawbone, the, the palate, is actually the base of your skull, and above it are all these airways and sinuses. So people with deformed upper jaws have major, major airway issues. They have snoring problems, they have breathing problems. It's, it's not just you have, your smile isn't pretty, because it's either crooked. It's not even it nothing to do with that. It actually has to do with the function and form of your upper jaw. And the incorrect feeding of our infants in our society is causing major, major skull deformations in our children. So lack of breastfeeding until the proper age combined with feeding your children mushy foods. So these wonderful Vitamix processed foods that are on the shelf in the store and many other stores and a lot of, a lot of mommies, holistic mommies, make their own processed food. Well, in nature, there's no such thing as a Vitamix. So our ancestors and people living naturally don't have access to technology that grinds your food up to mush because we're not really designed to eat it that way. And so this lack of chewing and using your jaws, even without teeth, as the te children are developing, causes stunted lower jaw growth. A recent study proved that. They took ancest people with um, our ancestors from, from tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years ago, Homo sapiens sapiens, our species, and humans today, and children who have fed mushy food had lower jaw st stunted growth. So now you have upper jaw issues from not being breastfed long enough or properly, and then you have mushy food eating and your lower jaw is smaller than it's supposed to be. And voila, you get what? Crooked teeth. And major airway uh, issues. So what do we do today? So, so orthodontists then straighten teeth. They bring the teeth back sort of where they belong. The problem is, this is a major problem, the muscular imbalance remains unchanged and ignored. And so when you, when you take the braces off, the muscles are continue squishing the teeth. And then you go back to the orthodontist a few years later and say, my child's teeth got crooked again. And the orthodontist says, it's your fault they didn't wear the retainers long enough. And that's BS. Because I've seen plenty of people who, who swallow correctly and may not have such a bad muscular imbalance their teeth don't relapse. And yes, wearing a retainer is really important for the first six months, because that's when all the relapse usually occurs from retainer unuse. But at the end of the day, as, as people continue living, the, and the muscles are still not working right, your teeth will get crooked again. So what I see as a, as a dentist, I see a lot of adults who had braces in their teenage years that's either just as crooked as they were before. And, and then what happens is they go to an adult dentist, they straighten their teeth in adulthood, and you know what happens after that? They relapse, and it's blamed again on your fault. It's your fault. But it's not your fault, it's the doctor's fault for not recognizing your muscular imbalance. So the way to fix the muscular imbalance is something called myofunctional therapy. So it's basically, it's done usually by speech therapists, and what they do is they retrain your swallowing pattern and they retrain your, the muscles of your face to work right. It's, it's done through physical therapy. It takes about a year, okay? So myofunctional therapy. You can Google it. There's a lot of information on it. It's not in here. But it's, it is on the internet and you could look it up. Um, so, that, so that's the whole thing with crooked teeth. So, uh, there's, a, there's a great, great approach. It's called baby-led weaning. Anybody hear of that? Yes. Great. I knew you guys would know about it. So baby-led weaning is a critical, critical approach to feeding your infants. You basically give them a chicken leg and they're going to eat it. And, you'll be, and you basically it's feeding your children the food that's on your table. Not some special food for the children. Because it, in nature, and I grew up in the Soviet Union. When I was growing up, I ate what mom and dad made. And there was no choices. And I wasn't picky, because there was nothing else to eat, you know? So anyway, uh, 
So feed your children the food that's on your table, and you'll be amazed, that when they, even when they don't have teeth, how well they can eat. And they're not gonna choke. And people think that if you give them like big pieces of food, they're gonna choke and they're gonna die, and, and you know what? That doesn't happen, because it never happened for hundreds of thousands of years of our existence. So, you know, we did okay. We're designed not to choke on food that you eat, okay? So, does anyone have any questions about development and feeding your children? Great questions. Do the braces, okay. So, have anybody heard of a palatal expander? Okay, good. So what happens is, when, you're t so when you swallow your food, your tongue, this is the palate and this is the tongue, the tongue, the tip of the tongue should always rest a little bit behind your upper teeth. And when you swallow, the tongue actually squishes the food backwards into your throat, and the tongue leaves an imprint on the roof of your mouth. So this horseshoe wide palate is really a footprint, like a footprint in the snow, of your tongue. So that's, the swallowing pattern is always like this, and the tongue is always doing this. However, if you're bottle fed, and if your tongue is tethered to the bottom of, of your uh, jaw, it, that's called a tongue tie, and some people have a partial tongue tie. What happens is the pe people swallow, instead of up and back, they swallow forward, and they tongue thrust. And what happens is, that leaves your upper jaw, instead of nice and wide, it actually, your upper jaw gets long and narrow. And that's called a high arched palate. You have a high, long arch in your palate. And so when a dentist identify that, and what that looks like in your mouth is like a crossbite. Your teeth fit incorrectly. And dentists recognize that because it's very easy to see. And so they recommend a palate expander to bring your palate the way it's supposed to be. But if your tongue is not swallowing correctly, if you're still tongue thrusting, or your tongue can't lift all the way up, you take the, you know, the man-made appliance out, the tongue swallowing continues incorrectly, you know what happens? It goes back, it collapses again, unless you wear the expander for the rest of your life. Or you wear a retainer that locks your teeth into place. So you either need a two by four to keep your teeth in place or you swallow right. Now unfortunately, a lot of dentists don't recognize the swallowing issue because unfortunately, for reasons we can't even discuss now, it'll take too long, it got swept under the rug. And it's gotten forgot about by a whole generation of dentists. But in the 1970s, this was talked about and written about a lot. I actually owned the very last published book from 1976 on myofunctional therapy, this, this whole concept. And it's incredible. And, there, and it's, kind of, it's having a resurgence now in this country because we're seeing all these airway issues in children. You know, people are beginning to wake up a little bit. So, yes? Did you write a book about myofunctional No, I did not write a book. On, I, I, I was six years old in 1976. All right, all right. So, I'm not a genius. <laughs> I'm not smart. Yes, we, actually have, we have a myofunctional therapist on staff. Because what we do is we, we straighten people's teeth a lot because they're crooked, but we don't forget about the tongue and the muscular imbalances and we help our patients fix it. Or if they don't want to fix it, then they're stuck wearing retainers for the rest of your life. That's the deal. Either you're in tension forever, which is kind of silly because they're not swallowing right anyway, or you gotta swallow correctly. In other words, you want to get your function of your body correct again. 